Hey everybody, welcome to one in a series of videos about the Zenobia Award. Now what is the Zenobia Award? Well, I'll have some links in the description below the video, but the Zenobia Award is a design award put together by various folks across the board game industry, and it's targeted towards marginalized designers and also topics for games. So all of these games that I'm gonna be showing you on these videos are from different historical contexts and different time periods. Now at the time of recording this video, the Zenobia Award has just announced and narrowed down their selection of finalists. And I saw this announcement and I looked at some of the games that they had announced and a lot of them look really, really interesting to me. So I reached out to uh, the folks at the Zenobia Award and they put me in touch with the designers of all of the finalists. And I've had a chance over the last several weeks to demo some games, do some interviews, do some play testing. And so I'm gonna bring you uh, some showcase of some of those finalists. Now, this stuff, if you're watching this in the future, the game may have changed. If the game eventually gets published, I'm sure it'll look a lot different. All of these videos are gonna be showcasing the game on Tabletop Simulator. So again, it, things might have changed and there may or may not be links to the Tabletop Simulator mod directly. That may change in the future as the designers you know, feel differently about maybe showcasing the game in its various different states. So today we're going to talk about Wene Casse by designer Allison Collins. And this takes place in the famed site of Machu Picchu. So historians have argued for decades over the function of Machu Picchu, swayed between re-examined evidence, charismatic historians, building elaborate myths. Explore this enigmatic wonder and challenge your perception of history. So let's go right to the table here and we can see a few things going on here. So the first thing you're going to see here is the main board here, and this is the Machu Picchu site. And there's various different locations. You can see there's little decks and displays of evidence cards, which are linked to different site locations here. And these evidence cards you're going to be collecting and playing over here into the publication area. So you're going to be trying to sort of push different theories based on kind of your discipline as a researcher and an investigator. And so there's gonna be various different uh, publications that you're going to try to uh, accomplish to get yourself different interpretations and sort of almost in a way transform the site or just transform the perception of the site here. So let's talk about these interpretations. So throughout history, there's been a lot of argument and discussion about what the site of Machu Picchu really was for. And so some folks thought it was a citadel, some thought it was the lost city of the Incas, some thought it was a religious site or a royal estate. And if you look here in our starting hand, we have some of these different cards here. So here's an evidence card, and you can see this has kind of two points towards it being a citadel. So this, this was evidence that would suggest it was a citadel. Uh, here is suggesting that it was maybe a royal estate. So you'll start off with some of these cards here, and then you'll have color-coded blocks uh, for those same kind of interpretations there. And so what the game is, it, it's broken up into a few phases. In the first phase here is a worker placement phase. So you can see you'll start with these different uh, researchers here. So you have three researchers and then also a lead researcher is kind of a special uh, worker there. So one thing you're gonna do here is you're gonna take and play it to a site here. So you, maybe we'll take this guy here and play it. And then you will take one block and one card. So maybe I'll draw this blue card into my site there. And then I will take one of these standard blocks and just kind of put it off to the side. So now by me being here, I've sort of affected the site. I've, I've disturbed the site in a way. And so you have these various different impact tokens here. And as you do that, these impact markers will go up there. And well, these tokens don't want to behave, so let me just move them off to the side real quick. And so now we have this impact marker there. And then as you score influence here, you will get, these are basically your points, but you're just gonna subtract the amount of impact that you've caused to the site from your points here. So if this were my final score, I basically would have 3.6 minus three. Now, as you do your worker placement here and go to these various different locations, you're gonna to start to collect more blocks and, and more evidence cards. And sometimes you can put down two workers. For example, here you can collect two blocks and one card out of here. And there's some other actions over here that will come into play uh, late in the game. And so maybe evidence will start to get discarded so you could go in here and search the, sort of this is the archives of all the evidence that has come before and you can search and, and grab here or you can start to maybe even swap blocks around on the board there. So as you collect these evidence cards, then at some point you'll want to use your lead researcher here, which we can take and use. And then we can 
uh, then try to do a publication. And you can see here, okay, this is a publication that you could submit four cards to, a maximum of four cards, and then you will get two books or two determinations, or excuse me, interpretations, uh, and that's what the books sort of represent there. So if I wanted to take, I could say, maybe I wanted to do this one here. Let's see what cards I've got. Okay, let's say I wanted to do this, and this will make a little bit more sense. So I'm going to try to get this particular piece of uh, publication in here. I can do two cards, right? And so I'm going to take these two cards. These will go face down, and but I'll show them face up here just for argument's sake. And you can see the values here are going to be three and two. So the lowest value will be one, and the highest value will be three here. But you might have other cards here. Let's flip some of these over, like this one, for example. Uh, this will actually add three to yellow or three to the lost city evidence, but it'll actually subtract from the religious evidence. So the reason for that is when I submit these, I can then, I have to also at least stake one of these blocks that I've collected. But if I had more, I could put more in there. And that might be a little bit of a risk there because somebody else could come along if they wanted to sort of try to hijack my publication. They could take any of their researchers here and submit their own set of up to two cards as well as any other blocks there. And what will happen is we'll reveal both sets of cards or multiple sets of cards if there's more players doing it. And whichever of these types of evidence has the highest value will be what is determined there. And then that player will win the uh, reward here, in which in case would be the two red books, the two red interpretations. But all of these blocks that have been contributed here will match the color of whatever uh, type of evidence ends up being the one that wins out. So in this case, let's say I just did it by myself and everybody left me alone. I'll get the two red books here. So we'll go over to this side here and we'll, you can put these on your little bookshelf in this particular mod here. And you'll want to collect these books. There's a lot of reasons to do that. And then in this case, I will get three uh, blue blocks here and I can just put these kind of in my hand in my hidden area, but I'll just put them here for right now. I'll grab another one. And then after players are done placing their workers out, collecting evidence and blocks, or, or doing publications or taking different actions over here, then you're gonna have to resolve these opportunity things. Now these are actually places where you can place uh, your workers, but they also might be various events that will cost you blocks. Uh, so for example, if I wanted to place my researchers here, then when we resolve these left to right, we're gonna resolve these and I can get here. And so in this case, I would just get an extra victory point, extra influence, and that's what this influence track is. Uh, but these can be a whole different variety of things. Uh, and then some of these will have a 10-year requirement here. You can see in the lower left-hand case, there's actually a requirement to have a level three tenure, which I'll, I'll show you in a minute, and also just card some cards in this case. And like I said, some of these are actually going to be events. So here, for example, we have a tourism restrictions, and these are real events that took place uh, during this time period. And you can see at the bottom, the based on the number of players, a certain number of blocks have to be contributed. And so if we sort of collectively do this, we'll sort of blind bid these blocks. And you can see in this case, if supported, all players will actually decrease their impact by five. But if not, then all players will increase their impact by five. Now you may not want to get rid of those blocks because again, these blocks will either be colored blocks that you've collected or blocks that you want to turn into a color that you want. And so after you've resolved all these different events and things like that here, you're gonna move over to the modeling phase and you're gonna to start to sort of transform uh, the site here uh, with these sort of evidence blocks that you've collected. So anywhere that you've placed a worker, so for example, I placed a worker here as well as over here, I can start to put these different colored blocks however I want. You just dump as many blocks as you want into here. Now the only requirement here is that these can't be more than three high and there is some strategy here to, you know, proximity of blocks to each other and maybe covering up um, these different uh, sort of nondescript, non-colored blocks, the standard blocks, so that prevents other folks from taking them. So you can kind of sort of artificially sort of change uh, the presentation of the site there. And you also will score these in a few different ways here, which we'll get to in a minute. So this is the modeling phase that happens after we resolve all of these events up here. And so you'll do that, and then at the end of the third round and the final round, you actually will have a scoring phase. Now, before we talk about that, we need to talk about your tenure here. And so if you remember, we grabbed some books here. And so these are what the books are for. Now, you want to pick a track here, and this is going to, this is a really a big part of the game, change sort of how you score uh, the game. 
So if we take a look here, let's start at the very beginning. At the bottom here, you can start your tenure track, and to start here, you have to have at least four books on your shelf. So you have to have some publications under your belt. So right now I've only got two, but let's pretend I've got a couple of more. So boom, I can move up here. Now on your turn, when you go and place a worker out here on the board, you can take kind of two sort of minor actions, uh, just they're not really actions, but you can sort of move up twice on this board each time you take a turn. So if, you know, if I just published maybe my fourth book, I could go boom, go here, now that I'm on there, and then to move up to level two, I can place a publication from that bookshelf and gain that interpretation. And then when we score that, I'm gonna gain one influence for each book, for each, excuse me, for each block on the model of that interpretation. And so if I put that on here, then I'm really sort of positioning myself as a citadel sort of, uh, you know, academic. So that's kind of my, uh, my hypothesis in this case. I'm sort of forcing myself down that path to be sort of somebody that says Machu Picchu was a citadel. Now, as you, you, can, you can start to move up each of these tracks here. Now, determinist is going to, as they move up, there's some different sort of uh, requirements that you need. They're going to have to place a same colored book here. So they're going to say they're just determined that the site was of one type or another. But they're actually going to score two points uh, for the various different blocks. So kind of double, double score this stuff. But you're locked into that particular type of block. So if there's a bunch of blue blocks out here and I'm, you know, I'm going red, I'm going Citadel, that's not going to be good for me. Now on the right here, we have the empiricists and they actually have to have three different colored blocks or three different interpretations. So we'll grab some other books here. And so as you move up, you have to place different colors here. So there's a real kind of strange dynamic that happens here where you start to want to score, you know, the various different types. And so there's a real kind of balancing act and sort of like piggybacking off each other a little bit because the game dynamics are going to change. If everybody goes determinist, then you're going to kind of push and sort of tug of war each other into different kinds of points. But then another player is going to see that and try to go empiricist. So there's a balancing act there in terms of like how you want to sort of present yourself as a researcher, as an academic in the context of, uh, you know, trying to define what Machu Picchu really was. Now, sort of dovetailing off of that, you have here this last one, the popularizer here. And so as you decide to move up here, you really don't care uh, about the actual facts and you know all of the evidence in, involved. What you're really trying to do is get unlock this documentary uh, team marker here. And so they can actually take and put this in a location and they'll start to score uh, points just for everything in that location and also double points if it matches uh, their interpretation. And when you get to the scoring, you scored it a few different ways. You scored like the total blocks and there's a nice little handy like uh, scoring aid here. But then you're gonna look at the various different regions and score points for those based on if they match your interpretation or not, uh, if the majority of the blocks in that region match that interpretation there. Now you'll also score points for if you have this academic bust here. And this is if you have the most uh, books on your bookshelf at any point, then you'll take this and you'll add this. And so you'll get some extra points uh, during the scoring phases there. You can take this from other players if you surpass them on the, uh, you know, the net number of books that you've published. At the end of the game, you'll get some extra bonus points for the books you've published and any kind of other bonus opportunity cards that might have come into play. Uh, but there's a real balancing act here between uh, sort of your path and sort of your approach to, you know, how you're sort of using this site to better, almost in a way, better further yourself in a way and kind of like your own like kind of hidden agenda in a way in, term, in determining, you know, what you think this site really meant and a balancing act between sort of juggling your own personal ambition with the kind of the factual evidence of the site. Okay, so that was a very brief overview of Wanai Kase. There's, so there's a lot I really want to say about this game. Uh, the dynamics of the tenure track, I think, is really kind of the core sort of engine that drives this game. Uh, because one thing I didn't show you in the kind of the walkthrough there is you can actually sort of switch uh, tracks. Now, it's not without cost, but it's also not impossible to, to switch. So you can kind of switch and then sort of start to go up the other track. Because as the sort of dynamics of the site itself starts to take place, you know, with all the different blocks and the opportunities for scoring, so there's going to be a lot of uh, consideration that the player has to take in, into account where, 
you know, hey, I've kind of been going hard on the determination side, but maybe I should sort of, you know, diversify a little bit, or maybe I've spread myself a little bit too thin, or, you know, maybe I've got a last ditch edger, I'm gonna become a documentary filmmaker and try to take advantage of all the kind of the work that some other, the other folks have done. And there's a lot of cool implications here, uh, thematically and mechanically. So on the mechanical side, it's very much like a stock game or like an old, you know, train 18xx style game where sort of the valuation of the sort of the idea or the the evidence and how that is presented itself is going to sort of alter the value of the science. So you've got to be very adaptable and adjust to uh, sort of how that sort of emerges out of through the course of the gameplay and what kind of evidence and stuff that everybody's finding at the time. Uh, so that's a cool dynamic. So it has that sort of brinkmanship, that piggybacking kind of idea. And it makes you feel involved with the other players in terms of like, I'm trying to be the best, you know, researcher, the best investigator of this site. And in some ways trying to make a name for yourself. So there's a real sort of almost paradox there where you're sort of, you know, I'm trying to, you know, find the evidence and present the science and, and do everything, you know, proper like I should in an empirical way. Um, but then you're balancing it out with trying to get sort of the credit for it, right? And so there's opportunities to go in and sort of hijack somebody else's uh, research paper, their publication, and say, you know what, no, actually, I have evidence that shows this, and it sort of, you know, counteracts what they're trying to present. And, you know, maybe they staked a lot of those you know, uh, non-colored blocks. And so you can sort of hijack that. And then the, this part of the site really sort of changes uh, based on that. And so there's some real sort of implications there about, you know, this, the scientific community and all that kind of stuff and uh, the, the academic community. And so how things get published. And so there's there's a certain level of critique there uh, in, in a certain way. And th- just a, an examination of that kind of uh, that kind of society and stuff and and how the site's treated as well because you have the impact of it you can't just go in there and dig it up because it's just the site is just being altered by you being there so there's a lot of implications there as well and how just you know the involvement and the interaction of all these competing researchers is is in some ways sort of altering you know the the pristine state of that site and there's some nice good events and stuff like that that gives you a real good sense of the flavor and you know some of the different things that happened and the controversies that went on at, at the time. Uh, so mechanically, it's really very interesting, the whole dynamic thing. Uh, if you think of games like Brass or like 18xx games and that kind of stuff, if you're familiar, if you're familiar with those, I think this would be something you very you could be very interested in. And just you know the approach of uh, the whole theme and the whole just concept is not something that is really um, existed. You know, it's not really something I've ever seen in a board game before where you're really kind of questioning kind of the efficacy of of the real science that's being done. It, it kind of calls that into, into question, which is just an interesting concept as well. So definitely take a look at Wene Casse. If the Tabletop Simulator link is below, then take a look at it. Uh, if not, uh, then be on the lookout for it in the future, hopefully. Thanks.